I am thrilled to be able to introduce um, Dr. Mahmoud Nakshene, who is going to um, close out, give us some thoughts on, on the uh, event today and share with us. Uh, Mahmoud is the Chief Technology Officer for IBM Global Industries. He's responsible for driving IBM technology differentiation based on industry needs and opportunities. And I can think of no one better to um, give us a little bit of a wrap up and summary of what took place today. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it is really a great privilege to be a part of uh, the session today. Uh, with our colleagues at the panel. Uh, I thought um, given the, uh, the institution goals and our partnership between IBM and Columbia, maybe we can take a look at uh, the early days of this collaboration and uh, over the decades as it has evolved, uh, there are great lessons that I learned myself and hopefully by sharing those uh, uh, setting uh, a direction that is inspiring, that is world-class, uh, that is uh, second to none in Colombia and IBM uh, working together and uh, delivering their innovation and agenda. So we do stand as a part of uh, the, uh, this collaboration uh, of the IBM Columbia, uh, Columbia Center of Blockchain and Data Transparency and uh, for me to be one of the IBM executive sponsors of this, we have great expectations. We have tremendous opportunities and we stand on the accomplishments uh, of amazing work in the past on the shoulders of giants. Uh, we are stewards of two major institutions, Columbia and IBM um, in business and academy, academia partnership and the work is nothing short of world-class and nothing less than best in class. Uh, Professor Chang uh, started the session today talking about uh, the uh, first IBM research, uh, the Watson Scientific Computing Laboratory was established in 1945, uh, 116th Street, uh, right across the street from Columbia. That's uh, when, when I was there, took my classes and later when I was teaching, but the story actually, this is 1945, the story goes before that. And it all started almost 93 years ago. In 1928, there was a visit from um, a Columbia lecturer, Benjamin Wood, who was the head of Columbia University's Bureau of Collegiate Educational Research. And he wanted to meet with uh, Thomas Watson Sr., the president of IBM, who was on the board of trustees of Columbia. And uh, his intention was to solve a very specific problem. He wanted to use IBM machines at the time for tabulation and automated calculating to replace the laborious hand scoring of exams. By the way, there is gonna be an exam at the end of this session and we'll use that computer to grade it. This meeting went for about an hour and Thomas Watson hired him as a consultant. Uh, weeks later, three truckloads of tabulating, card punching, sorting accessory equipment were delivered uh, and they were all uh, installed in the basement of the Hamilton Hall at Columbia, and that was the start of the collaboration. What they did together, this is uh, 1928, was amazing for its time. Let me give you a few tidbits of what was going on in 1928. The British inventor, John Baird, broadcasted the first TV signal from London to Hartsdale, New York, just north of New York City. We had the first TV programming, the first machine sliced and machine wrapped loaf of bread was sold in uh, uh, Mississippi. 
New York Yankees uh, beat St. Louis Cardinals 4-0. to zero. Of course, anything we do, we got to have a Yankee story. And uh, the uh, Congress approved the building of the Hoover Dam, the Ford um, factory, automated factory in Dearborn, Michigan was in its first year of operation. That is what the world looked like at the time. And what Thomas Watson Sr. and um, Columbia put together at the time was let's go build a statistical calculator that is 10 times faster. It can read 150 cards per minute. And this was manufactured in Endicott, New York. This was called the Columbia machine and it was installed in 1931. Once the system was installed and it was operated by IBM and Columbia teams, everyone noticed Rockefeller Foundation brought problems to solve. Economists, publishers, Carnegie Foundation was interested. Yale, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Ohio State, California and Princeton, all of their academic institutions were interested in working with this system. And uh, this led to the IBM model 805 that was a automated scoring and tabulating machine. Um, and it was used actually in World War II for solving um, recruits and uh, uh, placement of the recruits in the war and later on for scientific problems. At the time, this was revolutionary. At the time, it did change the world. Soon the competition came, that is the ASCC machine at Harvard, the ENIAC, which was the uh, first vacuum tube uh, computer at University of Pennsylvania. And it led to Thomas Watson Sr. in 1944, deciding that we need to have a scientific organization that can stay ahead of tech development and drive that agenda, which led to 1945 creation of the first IBM research lab at Columbia, the Watson Center at Columbia. And at the time was called the department, the pure sciences department. Leader was uh, Professor Wallace Eckert, who was an astronomist, a young, young astronomy professors. And uh, that first computer uh, was installed almost 60 feet by 20 feet. Uh, and, and it was the origin of starting to solve complex mathematical problems as well as applications of it to business and the problems of the time. Here is what press mentioned at the time. This is the New York press uh, during the, uh, uh, the, at the time of the opening of the lab. The laboratory is designed not only to increase the already notable contribution of high efficiency calculating machines to the war effort, but by a broad interest in computational problems of all branches of the physical and social sciences to strengthen the scientific and educational foundation of our national security and peace in the world. Sounds familiar? I think we have a tremendous opportunity with everything that's now coming together with our exponential technologies and drive the same level of innovation. Another newspaper reporter writes, I asked why isn't it possible to put an income tax return in one of the slots of those dang fangled modern devices. They talk about the computer in Colombia. And watch it come out soft, sealed and ready for delivery on March 15. May I note that that was the tax return date at the time. Less ingeniously, he commented, Colombia eventually hopes to manufacture a calculator that will shame the 51 foot mechanical marvel at Harvard. 
this was the origin of the collaboration. It was the origin of our two institutions coming together. They called the computer the electronic brain that was put together and over time improved with really mechanical switching between different devices, more extensive use of um, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, um, electronics at the time and building faster machines. Next was the creation of programmable uh, uh, languages and starting the science that with Fortran, which stands of course for formula translation. The statement from Thomas Watson Sr., one of the statements of the time was, and I'm quoting, our motto down through the years has been and will continue to be, there is no saturation point in education. We have always placed special emphasis in our scientific development. And uh, at the time, actually, the story goes that uh, one of the IBM salesmen approached uh, Watson Sr. with a statement of, we probably can't sell more than a couple of these based on all of these uh, partnerships that we are putting together. And uh, Thomas Sr.'s response was, well, who wants to make money on education? We have bigger things to do here. Few years later, based on what Columbia and IBM put together in the research center, there was a realization that the latest computers could be applied to many business problems. And that was the start of putting together the computing, the manufacturing, everything else that go on with it and building the line of business that reach across the world. What kind of problems did people solve at the time? What were they focusing on? These are from 1940s type of problems that IBM and Columbia scientists and researchers were trying to solve. An attempt to grow diamonds. I don't think that worked out. Well, economically that is. Store information in wild root cream oil. Interesting idea. Mysteries of photosynthesis were explored. The talk about sustainability, carbon, and everything we heard today from our colleagues, very related. The behavior of matter near absolute zero temperatures. Of course, a big aspect of quantum computing. And the structure and function of blood serum proteins were investigated at the time with the Columbia School of Medicine, Albert Einstein. Theoretical concepts were advanced. Scientists were recruited. Pioneers were brought in. And they were all part of an academic institutions, teaching, training, researching, building, and driving the, uh, uh, the, the joint partnership going forward. Much of the work during that time was focused on theory of computing and applied math. And of course, it advanced to other areas over the decades. If you think about the topics, the problems that the first partnership even before 1945, 92 years ago, IBM and Columbia together aspired to solve. It gives us a path on where we would go. It would encourage us and inspire us for nothing less than great, great outcomes. Now, let me take you from those days over the years, and I have had the privilege and the great Great honor to be part of that journey from my own education at Columbia and later teaching there. Over the years, the areas that between IBM research and Columbia we worked on were along the following areas. We had always 
a great participation in government programs and national labs. In fact, one of those computing systems was delivered to, uh, uh, to uh, the Los Alamos National Labs at the time. It evolved to post computing and hardware areas to algorithms. The first, first um, areas to focus on data science. Later on, image processing, system design, internet and communications. And this is when, at the time that I was a student at Columbia, distributed computing, tremendous work that went with analytics in many departments across Columbia, multidisciplinary, and always, and always a topic that was in mind for both institutions was about social impact and doing good science for social good. When we look at the history of where we have been and the areas that IBM and Columbia have worked and partnered together, it really talks about the steps that the computer science, computer engineering, social sciences, medicine, life sciences, law, finance, across the departments, it shows the history of innovation of technology and the applications of them to those areas, as well as core scientific efforts that led to the creation of everything that we see around us. Tremendous path, tremendous history. We heard today from our colleagues, the continuation of that, which is the great innovation applying AI and data two problems of the day in sustainability. I mentioned understanding of photosynthesis was one of the first area of focus 90 years ago. Sustainability, of course, a big topic of the time for us, what data and AI can bring together as far as addressing it, transparency and basic sciences that we can bring. We heard about blockchain, how we can apply that to digital banking, payments, cryptocurrencies, currencies, fintech, and microfinance and Bitcoin. How do we apply blockchain, data, and AI to sustainability, cold chain, product authentication, and many, many other scenarios. At the center of innovation in trust and transparency in digital workflows end-to-end -end that applies in so many domains. Later, the conversation on security, cyber, software, supply chain, how do we apply AI to it? And then, as we heard from the accelerator program, the IBM and Columbia partnership, and even if you go back to the early days, was always about solving real business problems. It was always about that. And it was engaging with different institutions, companies, government that led to the selection of those problems and those innovations led to contributions in core sciences across the board. So we are continuing that tradition with our innovation accelerators in the new world of startups, of internet, of quantum, of AI, and the hyper exponential innovation that we see in the technology. Let's talk about people and culture. There is a great tradition of collaboration here. This is the statement from Simon Koenig, who was the first director of Watson Laboratory. And he described the environment as this, the diversity, the quiet competence, the style, the personalities, and the scientific successes at the Watson lab Laboratory have been sources of great satisfaction for many of us over the years. In fact, if you go and look for many people who ended up coming to the center from across the world, not just from United States, with the intention of to be part of this, and they would just take any job to be a part of the agenda that was created is amazing. The type of a talent, the type of innovation that they all brought to the center 
and the type of innovation that they brought in uh, solving board problems. Over the years, over the last many years, and from the time I've been associated with Columbia and IBM at the same time, we have had always many of our leaders at IBM Research, departmental leaders, vice presidents, who came from Columbia and continue that tradition um, in many areas such as algorithms, life sciences, internet, industry solutions. Um, and uh, I myself having the privilege of having been a student and later uh, an adjunct professor working with so many students that I hire them back to IBM Research. And, and so a great tradition of partnership and working together and an environment for science and innovation that has been very, very fruitful. We talked about courses as a part of um, the Institute and the fact that part of the agenda is to build, I know on blockchain, we already have five courses published and continue to uh, that academic excellence and the teaching excellence. Let me give you another piece of history. 1947, the Watson Laboratory had a three week course on computing. This was taught by Eric Hankam. He was a laboratory staff and later on was attended by 1600 people over the year and the people came from 20 countries. That's what I mean changing the world. Everybody came to understand and learn about computation, algorithms and computing systems. So in the tradition of all the folks in the past for 93 years, who created a new model for business, IBM, academia, Columbia, to come together, solve world problems, drive scientific agenda, charter the path of computing. We are at the point that technology is again, I believe, is, as, is in an inflection point. And that inflection point is the combinatorial aspect of everything we see in AI and data, in security, in quantum, in blockchain, and applying that to world problems in a socially responsible way, defining the good tech and working on hard tech. That's what IBM research and Columbia legacy is about. And that is where we want to take the center forward as an in joint institutions that deliver tremendous scientific and innovation agendas that are applying to everything that we face today. I hope this history the years of collaboration and the model that we have had, it helps shape, understand the culture, continue that and take that to the next level of innovation. With that, uh, I open to any questions or comments for that matter that you may have. Hamoud, there is one question um, that that is in in the in the chat that uh, might be fun to answer, uh, but I wanted to just first say thank you so much. Y you you are so inspirational and giving us purpose to to plow forward. So this question uh, is just about um, quantum. Is the development of quantum physics and thus quantum computing the next forefront for IBM? It is the biggest scientific innovation that has the characteristics of everything I talked about in terms of applying to real world problems 
and changing the game, absolutely. And it's a major, major focus for us at IBM Research, as well as uh, for the rest of the company. As you may um, have seen in recent announcement, just about a week, uh, we installed the first uh, quantum computer in Germany, Fraunhofer uh, uh, Scientific Center, and a future one coming soon to Japan. So yes, that is uh, our largest innovation, scientific, game-changing agenda. Uh, I'll just mention um, that in true IBM spirit, I, I don't know if it's last week, this week, or next week, but I believe some of your um, quantum folks will be teaching some of our students in some summer sessions that we're working together on. And I just thought I would, I would mention that um, I, I think that we are just about on the top of the hour, and um, that has given us so much inspiration for our future together. And I, I just want to say thank you so very much. Thank you to all of the speakers. Thank you to the participants. And um, it's been a wonderful time together. Thank you very much.